Hello, and welcome to today's episode of the Robcast Podcast. I'm here because I should be a guest. You should be a guest. Then. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm agreed. agreed. <laughs> no. Jack is a guest. Well, here with me today, I have our host in the house, Joshua. What did you just say? Damn it, I messed up. Yes, <laughs> I'm officially a host. I have graduated. I uh, wait, R- R- Rob. What am really I going off the rails? Today. Been promoted, Robert. What am I? This is the best day of my life. Josh, you overrank me now. I've never. Yeah, I'm the producer and the host. We I have, definitely uh, outrank producer you. Producer in the house, Joshua. Producer and host, Joshua. Presence. Producer and possibly future co-host if he plays his cards right. Yeah, I'm a co-host, right? And Jack, who will receive nothing above the level of guest, <laughs> who was already downloaded from. Special guest. Ooh, I nice. paid my hundred dollar fee though. Uh, well, I still haven't made. You made that check out to Joshua. That was your one. Fault. Yeah, I embezzled all that money for my own purposes from the podcast. <laughs> well, anyway, off the rails as we always are. <laughs> Here with me today I have Joshua and Jack, and we're going to be talking about hot fuzz. Mm-hmm. The fuzz. And we're not talking about belly button lint. No, we're talking about police officers that make calendars. Yes. Sure. That doesn't necessarily apply it's a reference to a world yeah but if, if, you, if you've seen if you've seen our previous episode you will have known that we are doing the cornetta trilogy of uh the three egg films shaw the dead hot fuzz and the world's end and before we cut into this i believe we have a few pieces of hot news joshua <laughs> you want to take it away if you will uh yeah 100 percent uh, just a couple little tidbits, little kisses on the cheek. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first of which is that apparently Henry Cavill is in nego- negotiations mm-hmm. to return as Superman uh, in the DC universe. Uh, what do you guys? What are you guys' thoughts on Henry Cavill as Superman, just in general? Uh, I think he really looks the part. I like the suit. I like he's not particularly bad in the acting. I think it's just the material he's given. Mm-hmm. I think if they do like a very, um, if they go back to the roots of Superman, they and actually tell a good Superman story, I believe it has potential. Yeah, I, I would agree with... Sorry to cut you off, Jack, but uh, I would ah. agree with that. Uh, I like a Superman. Like I think he portrays the character well in terms of his look. Uh, again, his acting, it's all, it's all very good. He's like He can play both the upstanding citizen and kind of the troubled hero as well. Uh, and obviously, I think a lot of people's opinions have been clouded by the, the differing opinions on Man of Steel. Uh, but yeah, I agree. I think he's a good Superman... Uh, in general, and I wouldn't be opposing in, in future movies. Jack, you were you were about to say? You pretty much summed it up. <laughs> <laughs> but I wonder if this if this is negotiations for returning to do like voiceover dub lines and things for the Snyder Cut, which Wrong. is also being. That's released. definitely not true. It's for it says it's for future movies. No, okay, for okay. Well, I should probably read an article. Yeah, but you, you never read the article. We know that we know that they are going to be recording dialogue for these for the Snyder Cut. So possibly on how that reaction of this new version of kind of a little reboot of this section of the DCEU goes will determine if Henry Cavill continues in the role. Oh, well, actually, I lied. Uh, I <laughs> Apparently, uh, was right. Cavill right. and Warner Brothers aren't in talks for Man of Steel 2. Uh, and a sequel for the first movie isn't in the cards for now. Uh, the focus on negotiations for a cameo role in an upcoming DC film such as Shazam 2, Black Adam, or Aquaman 2. Mm-hmm. Sh- Superman did actually cameo in the first Shazam, yeah, which I still haven't watched. Yeah, uh, but it's really good. Yeah, like, Cavill wasn't specifically in that. It was just a uh, really buff guy in the Superman suit. Yeah, the, uh, the rap, the website, suggests that Cavill could simply sign on to film pickups for the recently announced Justice League Snyder Cut, uh, but I did read that they weren't going to refilm anything, so I, I think that's unlikely. Yeah, it's, it's, it, there's no reshoots. There's simply just dev dialogue and budget for VFX. The effects and post production. Yeah, yeah. So interesting. I guess that kind of tanks are. Uh, well, uh, we probably should have read the article before we talk, started talking really about should. it. But I think that's a cool idea. I'd love to see him in like Shazam Two or Black Adam, especially. I think he'd be a good adversary or uh, help for Shazam. It'd be it'd be interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be good. Mm-hmm. And I believe the second piece of news that we have is uh, the uh, new trailer for our favorite unreleased movie, Tenet. Tenet. Starring NHL scumbag Sean Avery. But also not starring him. <laughs> he's just, he's Sean in Avery's in the movie, is what you're saying. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, According to already, Wikipedia, and that's already too much. <laughs> uh, no, but Tenet, I'm I voiced my you know opinion on this movie before. I'm very it looks excited. pretty good. Yeah. Matrixy movie. Yeah, I, I do really. I, I feel like this trailer really does give us a bit more kind of knowledge about kind of the mechanics of time travel in this movie, uh, as they described it in version. So like catching bullets, moving backwards in time, 
like set points. Like I think it could be really interesting. Um, and we're just gonna have to wait and see, you know, this movie is apparently coming out in theaters, uh, during Corona, as we mentioned previously on the podcast. And, you know, we just hope that we can, you know, go safely and AKA watch it from the comfort of my home. If you know what I mean, possibly. Like what, what do you, what do you mean, Rob? Uh, you know, yeah, never mind. legally watch it from home Yeah, we wink. and not go to theaters because we are safe. Yes. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I watched the trailer. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> yes, we watched the No, it's trailer. cool. It basically looks like Inception 2.0, right? It's essentially what it is, which isn't a bad thing. It's Inception in an era where you're able to do more with like mm-hmm. effects and stuff, right? So not that Inception was lacking in terms of that, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it looks pretty interesting. See, I'm just wondering what the real plot is, because all we know is that like these guys are inversioning and doing stuff, but there's no, like, real indication of the plot. Yeah, they don't really go into it too much, which is both good and bad, right? Also, it'll be very... I'm, I'm very surprised. I, I'm excited for all the action sequences. Action sequences, because mm-hmm. it's very, you know, dynamic, interesting. Mm-hmm. 100%. Other, and, you know... Like, yeah, who knows? Really 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. So, uh, getting into the meat of the bone today, we're talking about Hot Fuzz, the second film in the... Uh, "Quote unquote Cornetto trilogy," a series of three films directed by Edgar Wright, starring Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, yeah, um, and we'll get right into that after these brief messages. Break. Uh, welcome back, and as we said before, we are going to be talking about Hot Fuzz today. As always, for our movie views, we try to guess the IMD. I am the I can't speak today. <laughs> I am sure good. that says I cannot speak today. <laughs> I M D Z B Z Y. Speak today. <laughs> Summer. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, anyway, um, I kind of cheated and made Glenn's a quick look at that. So you guys are going to be guessing it today. Okay, sounds good. Uh, okay. Um, let me give you a clue on the length. Wait, you know it already? Yes, I uh, I may have cheated previously to this. That's um, true. I could is... like go go and look at look at it before, and you guys wouldn't know. <laughs> Interesting. But where's the fun in that? It's a, no wonder Joshua. Come on, man. No wonder Joshua always wins these yeah. things. Okay, <laughs> well, it is one sentence long. Like it, it, it's really short. All right. Oh God. After Nicolas Cage oh. striking Nicolas Cage. <laughs> it's, oh, Nicolas, Nicolas Angel. Angel. <laughs> as a, uh, a success as a police officer, he has to go. Uh, to what's it called? A village. Just, just I don't know the village by name. Just a, a village. Sanford. He has to go to Sanford. He has to go to a village with no crime because. I said this making, was one sentence long. Everyone look back. <laughs> it's yeah. really short. It technically, it's uh, one sentence. Okay. Nicholas Cage. Oh, no one believes. Who? What the hell are you talking about, Nicholas Cage? Okay, I don't know who Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage okay. Is in this let, movie. Let, let me restart. We nick the character, the cop. No. Let me Nicholas Angel? Yes. Okay, Angel? Nicholas Angel tries to break a case, but no one believes him. Is that your whole thing? So Nicholas Cage. Nicholas <laughs> Angel tries to crack a case, but no one no one believes him. Okay. Gotcha. Mine. A London cop investigates a small town with an inordinate number of accidents. Okay. Uh it was not even close. What? <laughs> No, no, I, I mean, one of you guys was not even close. Gosh, uh, you're pretty spot on. The real you. one is, is a skilled London police officer check. is transferred to a small town, small town check. with a dark secret. Yeah, okay, mm-hmm. we can get that one. Uh, I I'm going to give it to Josh because... What? I'm the best! <laughs> what did you say again? Uh, Nicholas Cage. That's all I remember. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, you can. I only one. remember Nicholas Cage. <laughs> We should picture our uh, Nicolas Cage versions of Hot Fuzz. Yes. Just like him r- yelling at random levels. <laughs> this town is going down. Just them on a plane with a ton of criminals. <laughs> so basically, so Con Air. It's, it's Con Air. But he has a British accent. Yes. <laughs> this plane is going down! Uh, <laughs> oh boy. You gotta do a Nick. This is a Nicolas Cage podcast. My name is Nicolas Cage. I'm a British cop. My name. Tally ho. Oh boy, okay. We're going to get cancelled by the UK. We're already cancelled. <laughs> uh, so let's now rate this movie. You know, how do you guys think? 1 to 10? 1 being the best as we do here on the Robcast? This movie was pretty good. I, I enjoyed it. I, re- I, I really did. I think I might give this one 
An 8.1. An 8.1, okay. I forgot what I gave Shaun of the Dead. Uh, you gave it a 7.5, I think. What did I, I give Shaun of the Dead? Like a uh, some, yeah, I think you were on like high eight. I think you gave yeah. it an eight point nine. I give this one probably yeah seven point. Set, like Jack said, seven point eight, seven point nine. I said Wait, eight so point. You, I yeah, said so eight point one. So you guys agree oh, that this? Sorry. You guys think this one's better than Shaun of the Dead? I like no, it better. I like Shaun of the Dead better. Really? Why is that, Jack? I don't know. It was more comedic, you know, and I, I just enjoyed it better. It's weird. It's, it's weird. I just enjoyed it. I thought it was like I enjoyed the mystery element, and I thought it was like more thrilling, a more satisfying third act than Shaun of the Dead. Same. Like, I'm... Well, not that Shaun of the Dead is bad. I, no. I, I just feel like I enjoy this kind of more hardcore parody better, and that's why I'm going to give it a 9.1. Oh. Well, yeah, to be fair, we're watching all of your favorite movies, so... Yeah, well, actually, no, yeah, so, like, they're all very highly rated. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to some really crap movies later, and we'll why? riff into them. Uh, don't disparage Miss Americana. It's going to be a great experience on our great. Taylor Swift episode. Yeah, well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, but I really enjoyed this movie from, like, Shaun of the Dead was good, but I don't feel like they poked enough fun at the zombie kind of culture and genre, and I know that wasn't really the intent for this, but after seeing this one, you kind of wish that they did in the previous one. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you know, it's, it's an overall really good movie. Uh, Jack, do you want to give us a brief summary of the expansive whole movie? Yes. So basically, this movie's about a police officer named Nicholas Angel. So Nicholas Angel is a very good cop. The movie starts off with a full-on montage of him destroying uh, and doing a lot of good cop stuff. <laughs> and good so at the end of it, he gets uh, stabbed in the hand. He, that's his injury. By Santa. Yeah. So when he comes back from his injury, he gets sent to... What is it called? Stanford. Stanford. Sandford. A, a small village because he's doing too good and making everyone look bad. So he gets sent there, and he befriends his uh, p- partner, Danny. Guy resting him. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. <laughs> so uh, after this, like, accidents keep on occurring in the village, and it's like there's just a s- suspicious feel around it, but he can't really put, put his finger on it. And then, But then he finds out that the whole village is on it, and that, uh, what is it? That the, the village, the, a group of the village is uh, causing these accidents to kill whoever is like, trying to uh, affect their perfect village. Village, <laughs> pretty much. Like perfect uh, <laughs> violence, like no violence and stuff. So, well, yeah. yeah. It's not even Did like I a miss pr- anything? No, I think you did pretty well. Yeah, that's a pretty good summary. But yeah, then he has basically, basically to take it down. Clean it's not even a perfect village. Like, they just, they, it's like, what would happen, it's like the slippery slope in society, basically. So, like, if you put a person in jail for, like... A long time. <laughs> no, wait. No. If you put a person in jail for, like... It's a slippery slope. Like, so you put a person in jail for stealing something. Do you put a person in jail for looking like they're going to steal something? Do you put a person in jail for picking their nose? Do you put a person in jail for... I think this makes like no I think sense. Definitely, you should put Jeffrey. Okay, that's like uh, got a bit off track there, but that's a crime. basically, yeah, they they want to remain. They have this idealized perfect village, but they take it. Number one, they take it too far by killing people, but they take it even a step further by just like killing people because the lady wanted to move out of the village, mm-hmm. and because and if no one could have like her plant skills, no, she was if in the, the town couldn't no, have her plant skills, she was in the group. No could. She was in the group. Yeah, but she, was she didn't want her. Uh, We'll she didn't want her to gossip about it. No, we'll they, she was we'll moving get... out yeah, she was in of the, the village. Group. She was in the group who were killing people. I don't think she was. She was. doesn't matter, though. They, she they... wasn't connected to the people like, that was killing yeah. people. Yeah. I could have sworn she was. No. No, because she was dead. <laughs> yeah. and... But anyway, we'll get into that later on. First, let's go back to the beginning of the movie. I think the opening is actually really good. Kind of the opening montage of him. Like the credits and stuff? Yes, the opening credits. Yeah, yeah. kind of lures your titles. It lures your uh, logos. Working title production. Yeah. It lures yeah. you into it, saying, "Oh, this is cool." Yeah, action, but, action, cool. Yeah, but him doing his rep sheet, showing off his skills. Some of which they come back later if it's fencing or yeah, end combat, which really comes in towards the end of the movie. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. One that I, one that I'm really sad that we never see is you know advanced cycling. 
Because I feel like that could be really funny. <laughs> what do you mean advanced psycho? If he was like chasing a car and he was yeah. running like a speeding, speeding bullet. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Because like in the rap sheet, it's like, oh yes, you know, got all my, you know, when accelerated courses such as advanced driving and oh. advanced cycling. <laughs> I feel like that really could be funny. Like in the, remember when I was watching this, the scene where he chases down the, the pick, like the, the guy who like stole from the grocery store. Right. In the purple jumpsuit. Um, like someone passing with a bike and I was like, oh my God, he's going to grab the bike and like, <laughs> like no. yeah, missed yeah, opportunity. Yeah. Tis a shame. But yeah, I agree. It was a cool play montage to kind of set the stage for the character for the yeah. rest of the movie. And you really get to see like kind of what he's all about, like kind of how he takes the job too seriously. And... Well, I mean, he takes it appropriately seriously. He's a police officer. Yeah, but like how maybe, the, maybe like he how goes... gets stuck in between his and his girlfriend. Right, right. that would be I'm glad point. that the movie's kind of not in this relationship because you have good relationships like, I, this, this movie having, you know, Nicolas Cage not having, be, not being tied to London by this girl. Nicolas kind of, Cage? Yes, Nicolas Cage. We refer to as Nicolas Cage from now on. Sure. She's fake. Um, is, I don't know, I feel like it's the movie's benefit. Like, we didn't really need to get into that plot line more, because it is developed a bit more, but. Well, the per- it, It's with Danny <laughs> that he really gets to overcome this issue with. Yeah, but the plot of the movie is that, like, he's not in London anymore. That's the point. That's why it's so bizarre, because he's supposed to be in this town where, like, nothing bad happens after being in London. Yes. Yeah. Speaking so of- I agree that the plot of the movie, which is good, is good because it's the plot of the movie. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, but, but I, I'm glad they didn't really go into that relationship, because you didn't really need to. No, to no, no, you're right, you're right. Uh, speaking of going to a small village. Speaking of relationships, I'm in gay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, congratulations! Nice. And, and my, you can be. If I'm best man, you can be. You can be host. Ooh, Ooh. I need to marry just so I can be host. I'll be the producer. <laughs> no. I will take all the titles. I want every single title. So one, I'll have my own podcast called the Robcast, and I'll be the host, the producer, Robcast and the guest. 2. <laughs> no. You will be Robcast 2.0 after you get exasperated with me and just... Well, I'm going to sue. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, um, you know, when Nicolas Cage finally comes back after his leave from, you know, being stabbed by Santa, uh, he is sent off. Uh, he meets with Martin Freeman, who has a beautiful mullet in this movie. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him, like, the best hair award, because that, that mullet's really nice. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. It's so funny too. <laughs> like that, like this movie came out in two thousand seven. Like, is that is like that's that is the pinnacle of two thousand seven hair in London. I'm guessing because <laughs> I definitely know all the trends of hair in two thousand seven for London. I'm sure you do. Um. Yeah, but this movie is basically the the Cornetto trilogy is basically just like British actors galore. Yeah. It's like. Obviously, it's a British movie, but, like, it's, like, just such a prime space for, like, all these, like, elite British actors, like, uh, Martin Freeman, uh, Stephen Merchant, obviously, like, Simon Pegg and all of that. It's just so fun. I know, it's kind of cool to see all these, like, elite British actors. Even, I'm, a like, big, I'm a big Stephen Merchant. Yeah, even, like, Edward Woodward from, like, uh, The Wicker Man and all of that. It's, it's, it's interesting to see, 100%. So, he gets to Stanford, and, you know... Stanford. Stanford, Okay. We're we're on the office a little bit there. Uh, yeah. Jim, Jim going to sta- Stanford. Yes, Jim's going to Stanford. Okay, so Nicholas Cage gets to Stanford. Nice. Basically, just arrests like twenty people. He doesn't arrest them, but yeah, you know, he gets a, he he breaks his peace lily, and I think this really stands out, like this transition sequence, because usually it would just like in movies like this, it's like oh, characters going to a new town for quirky adventures. Mm-hmm. It's just like arrow shots of buildings and like. It's very distinct the way that Edgar Ray does this mm-hmm. and the filmmaking. It's very quick cuts and loud noises and him with his piece of the bee. And you see his phone and like the bars get lower and lower like for cell phone reception kind of symbolizing mm-hmm. that he's getting farther away from civilization and the life he knew. Quick cuts and loud noises sounds like me in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> quick cuts and loud noises sounds like me trying to move a refrigerator. <laughs> Okay. No, but I, I agree with what you've been saying. I spent quick cuts and loud noises. No, just about the Edgar Wright style and that that, trans- that kind of transition from London to to Sanford. Yeah, like I spent some time in the UK and like it reminded me of all my like travels through bus and, and stuff like around there just to see like even yeah just see like the bus tickets and like the stuff and all the train tickets. And I feel like just in general, it's awesome. This movie is like been es- like escalating the amount of like style and Edgar Wrightness that's been. In this movie, like between every transition runs smoothly into another match cuts. Um, mm-hmm. When he finally does get, you know, to his first day of work, I don't know. I just find it, I'm so tickled 
when I first saw this by when Danny like gives him the cake. Yes. And it's like, and he like just hands it to him on the side of the screen, just kind of shakes it a bit. I'm just so tickled. I don't know. It's, it's funny. Like the You're way so that tickled. Right, kind of just stages these shots. Yeah. Uh, kind of tickles your fancy. Yeah, it does. What does that even mean? No, I get it though. It's like tickled, like laugh. Like, oh, I, I don't know. Funny. Like it interests yes. you, I guess. <laughs> it catches I your eye. It's funny. It's, it's, you I, could have said that. You didn't say. Well, I, he can talk however he wants. It's not. All right. It's not abuse our host. It's actually it's a Britain dialect. I've watched too many. Yeah. Yeah. This is the Jack. Oh, you tickle my fancy, eh? In it. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, go right. He's a right old lad. Hey, it's quick cut, loud noise, eh? Oh God. I apologize for everyone's ears. This is an anti-British podcast. <laughs> no, I love British. Hey, all of our. British listeners are going to be, like, yelling. It's like All of our... Do we have British listeners? I don't think we do. No. Oh, we have yeah. Ireland. I saw Ireland. Yes, we have I- listeners, listeners in Ireland. Listener. I... Oh, wait, no, it's an Irish accent. No, don't. <laughs> 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 that I ate a pot of gold in the rainbow, yes. Ah, that's good. That's not oh, bad. No. <laughs> Irish brogue. <laughs> well, <anyway. laughs> no, oh, sorry, I was about to say... Well, off topic. Uh, in terms of Edgar Wright, too, um, I noticed, too, in the final fight scene, like... With Marvel movies and all of that, I notice how, like, sometimes in the fight scenes, you can get a bit, like, lost just with all the quick cuts and stuff, and it kind of takes you out of it. But, I, like, with the with the scenes where, like, he's fighting uh, Nicolas Cage, as we're calling yeah, him. yes. <laughs> Simon Pegg's character is fighting people. Like, the cuts really, as opposed to just cutting around so you kind of, you don't get a sense of it, it ebbs and flows with the flow of the fight. So it's like you're almost watching it firsthand, and you're able to yeah. get a full view of it it like, flows really well in terms of just showing it to the view they do the, like close-ups on like the, like the sh- like reloading shotguns and stuff like that it's really, yeah, really it's cool. very stylistic in that yeah sense. I, th- I think it's very visually appealing too right yeah, like, also, just like, in terms of the visually appealing in terms of telling the story mm-hmm. and having and keying in the viewer to that and you know th- like this also you definitely can't do this in the editing like every, you get the sense every plan is shot in the way that it just flows into one another mm-hmm and it's like everything to it is like <laughs> everything is to a T. Like this yeah. has all been planned out and there's no real room Mr. to space it in the editing room. Yeah, I agree. hundred yeah. percent. Well, obviously I would assume there's an extensive editing process, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they make it look easy. <laughs> but isn't, isn't it just like, oh, let's just shoot a ton of quick cuts and yeah. and stuff and we'll make it look cool. Like, like you get the sense everything's planned. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I agree with that. Well, you know, Nicolas Cage, first day of work. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk about the squad a bit. You know, we have a, we have a very diverse kind of, you know, group of I guess. people. <laughs> well, diverse in their personalities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> They're all British. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> it it's sense. a small British town. You're right, you're right. <laughs> Continue. Uh, <laughs> oh, so we have the uh, captain. Jim. Uh, Jerry McIsaac. Jim. No, I have no idea. Uh, yeah, Jim. Jim. Uh, we have the two uh, mustached uh, imbecile uh, detectives. Um, these who come up later. Wait, they're both named Andy? Yeah, that's what they call me Andy's. Oh. Because their name's both Andy. Do you not pay attention to your movies, <laughs> In true uh, Robcast podcast fashion, fashion, I'm learning things like two <sighs> days is five, a week after we watch the movie. No, it's like, oh, here are the Andes. And it's like, you know why they call them that? Because their names are both Andrew. Ha, huh, I knew you were smart. Oh, yeah. I, f- I forget. Oh, I was <laughs> 17 beers deep when I watched this. Just yeah. kidding. Uh, but yeah, anyway, <laughs> sorry. 17 Cornettos deep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So we got Jimmy Boy, Captain. We got the two Andes, which is also a, a mountain, which is kind of we got funny. Doris. Doris. <laughs> um, we got the uh, Cheech Mangu. The old we got guy. The young. Yeah. No, we got uh, the the Danny Feet. Butterworth or Danny Butterfingers. Uh, Bob, right? Bob. Oh yes. Uh, oh yeah, we got the guy who's a Perfect Sunday. <laughs> PJ. No, oh, and PJ <laughs> yes. Bob, the guy who's like Yarp. Yeah, Carl and, Johnson. Uh, Yarp. Something. <laughs> no, the other guy. Yeah, it's like, just like the Yarp guy, and then that other guy can't speak. Yeah, the other guy said, can't speak. Right. Yeah, I remember all these characters. <laughs> I hope people have watched the movie before listening to the podcast, or else they're going to be so confused. Yeah, we didn't see. Yeah. Like, we have a cast list up literally right here. Yeah, we like, barely know what we're talking about. We're still fumbling around this. Fumbling in the dark. We know nothing. Just, well, we're recording in a closet in the dark, so it's kind of difficult to see. No, but like, I, I feel like the squad is really. Just funny within their own selves and the fact that they're mm-hmm. so ignorant throughout yeah. the entire movie. Uh, like <laughs> Kevin Ed, Ed Eldon, like his character in this movie is literally my favorite 
Jared the Kings. perfect Sunday guy, right? Yeah, the perfect Sunday yeah. guy. Yeah. He's so incredibly funny. Like, and just like, in every one of the accidents, he's just like, um, okay, so what do we do? It looks to Angel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Angel explains it's like, yep, okay, we got this. Yeah, exactly. Oh, what do you say? <laughs> it's funny, yeah. too, like, uh, how you mentioned with that they're also ignorant. Uh, <laughs> it's almost, well, okay, I can get it a bit existential and deep here, but it's almost like a little bit of a commentary on ourselves, how when we get too familiar in our own uh, bubbles and whatnot, like it takes a lot to actually burst the bubble, break it into, yeah. break out of our own like kind of formed in worldviews and uh, beliefs, right? Well, especially because they've been growing up in this town, like you can even see in Danny that he's known no other way. Like that's just the way the things have been. Yeah. Dad in his little special club. Yeah, exactly. He's like, I don't know, I guess they just like went golfing or something. I don't know they're killing people. <laughs> I don't know they're kissing people. Yeah. Just, you know, you know, wrap them and send them off. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah I, when going into this movie I like literally had no idea what was going on like even though I've watched the trailer and he like told me a bunch of things like it goes in one ear out the other so like, I, had, I had no yeah, idea what was going on you never listen to me it's like, <laughs> that's why I learned with, with doing this podcast you never listen to me <laughs> I'm just always thinking and sometimes when you're talking I'm thinking and then I don't yeah. hear what you're saying <laughs> um, I'm just like one of the Charlie Brown parents like I'm just like I, I kind of like just, like 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 garbage. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, and another thing that I was about to say. So yeah, I go into this not like knowing anything, but when you think about the premise of the movie, it's actually like really unique and funny. Yeah. Small town has all these accidents happen, but they're not really accidents. They're just all murders, and everyone's like oblivious to it. They're like, oh, another accident. What a shame. <laughs> like it's it's a really funny premise too. So kudos for uh, coming up with that. Mm -hmm. Mr. Wright and Mr. Pig. Yes. Yeah, speaking of accidents, you know. Um, <laughs> Jack. Yeah. Speaking of accidents, Jack. Uh, Being on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Jack just kind of just walked in. We. Uh, Jack walked know. in one day. And we, we were too mean to kick him out. Yeah. We had no real intent of. Yeah. Uh, kind of keeping him here. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just kidding. We like Jack. Yes, we like Jack. This is a Jack podcast. <laughs> I already said that. This is the. What are you talking about? I said it was a I, Jack podcast you really earlier. Well, you're podcast wrong. <laughs> it's only a Jack podcast that I say is a Jack podcast. Yeah, what do you mean, oh. man? <laughs> anyway, sorry, you were saying, Robert? Uh, anyway, Speaking okay. of accidents. Yes, the first accident that occurs in this movie is to one Martin Blower, I believe. Eat. Mm -hmm. And his gal. Yes, and his gal. Gal pal. Mm -hmm. With like, a weird laugh. <laughs> yes, with a weird laugh. So, you know... Nicholas Cage pulls him over, and they get tickets for that night's play. Um, yeah. Romeo and Juliet. Juliet. This is... A, I love this scene. I, I was on the floor dying when I first saw this yeah. scene. <laughs> so, let, let me just break this down for you. So, they're in the play. It's horrendous acting. And I'm, and I'm a big supporter of cringe comedy. Mm. Like, like, this is like high school level acting here. Yeah. No offense to high school people, but as a... I, when I, when I was in a high school drama student, this was this is about what you're getting. Yeah, back like, in the day. Back in the day, um, but this is just it's beautiful. They sing um, "Lover Fool." That was, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Also in the office. Speaking of uh, Stanford, Re what really the, the song? Ah. And Jim's like Jim took Karen's chair and so Karen's ah. like it. Oh oh oh, oh okay, yeah. okay okay okay. Uh, sorry. So you were saying yeah, anyway, he loved the Romeo and Juliet. I love scene. it. You know, like he's just like oh. By poison off down love, I drink thy poison. And then he like lies down, like adjusts himself, and, like gets back up, yeah. like, adjusts the pillow, <laughs> and then, and then uh, she gets up, and it's like oh, poison, my love unto or whatever Shakespeare stuff. <laughs> but she's like a pair of angel wings for some reason. <laughs> it's a I, metaphor. I, I don't remember like back in the English class. I don't remember reading, you know. That uh, Juliet's an angel in this. Actually, I think in the uh, Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio one, Juliet had angel waves for some reason. Juliet, Leonardo de. Because you have to be. <laughs> I should yeah. remember in the poster. I could be mistaken. Oh, yeah, it was a masquerade? Nah. Maybe I'm mistaken. Oh, maybe like for the ball. Aha! Uh, huzzah! Oh. Yes, she is having the uh, wings of an angel. Oh, so, okay. That's a cool so, there we go. That's a cool little Now you're learning things after the movie because wow. it's a masquerade ha! ball. <laughs> Well, the tables have turned. Yeah, the movie when they commit suicide. So. It's, it's fine. Well, anyway, she's like, "Oh, if I kiss thy lips, I, you know, drop the poison." Yo, Leonardo was actually sure? a snack back in the day. <laughs> he's looking fresh. Wow. Mm -hmm. Are Sorry. you disappointed that he's not in the new Christopher Nolan movie? 
Tenet? Yeah. Yeah, I, I wish. Uh, no, actually, I don't, because Robert Pattinson, I, I like him a lot. Yes. As, Future I, Batman. I've progressed past, like, just knowing him in Twilight. I think he's a, he's a, he's like a, number one, he's a raving lunatic. Oh, you know what? At the end of the podcast, we're going to go through some news about Robert Pattinson, and we'll talk about it then. I'm going to have, yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll, we'll have a little Robert Pattinson second. Yeah, okay. Continue. Okay. Sorry, I cut you off anyway. like five times. This is good, though. We're getting some good rat here. Yes. Go. You got this. You got this. So, so what? She, like she, so she starts making out with him. It's like, oh yes, I get the poison. And he's like, yeah, okay, a few more kisses. And everyone's just like, what? So and she's like, <laughs> raise, and then she gets a gun and she raises her hand and goes, bang, let's go dark. And then love me, love me. Say <laughs> that you love me. It is so amazing. Like, yeah, it's a funny scene. Dying when I saw this. <laughs> and then you just see everyone in the like you just see Nicolas Cage and he's like what the hell is yeah. going on <laughs> like honestly I would watch a three hour play of like just you have a lot of time on your hands <laughs> no, no I would watch a, like if this was a thing it's like like a super cringy musical Romeo Juliet's like which is like a I don't know I, I would I would watch that entire play which I'd have my bucket of popcorn I'd be enjoying every single second of it yeah mm-hmm. so funny um so yeah so that was a good kind of opening scene that led into the first uh quote-unquote accident or murder yeah. and like simon Pegg, he's he notices all these things about it like it was a car crash right or and they got decapitated number one <laughs> they got decapitated in a car crash it was a pretty clean decapitation yeah, yeah. i don't think that would happen number it's, it's like yeah. taking an axe and you know getting them. i'm pretty sure if you had a decent forensics investigator you could pretty easily like mm-hmm. figure out that something's not what it seems i'm always wondering like how did they get because i said they called out forensics but like they're a small village and like they have like one police station so like it also plays into the thing that it isn't really the you know kind of the large co- corporation it's mostly just okay it seems there's no there's no suspicion so send them down just make sure like it's clean sweep if, if it's good enough we don't really it isn't like yeah. Looking for evidence or something. Yeah, it is like a super small village. I mean, you saw their evidence locker was bare empty when Nicholas yeah. Cage got there, right? Yeah, but he like notices all these things and they're just like, mm, oh well. <laughs> I guess because he can't, he's not really, he's not like a detective, right? So he, I guess he wouldn't necessarily be on yeah. those things in terms of opening up investigations and stuff. But I'm always, I'm wondering because like we do see the, I, I do like kind of the ominous black figure with like the axe. I do kind of like that little horror. Kind of yeah, oh, 100%. Like, Yo, I was like, yes, Scream 2.0, let's yeah, go. Yeah, because, like, I know that you're a big fan of, like, kind of the, you know, mystique and kind of a bit of dabbling the horror. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to tell Josh about this, but, like, when he sees it, I know he's going to like yeah. it. Good call. I was I was like, ooh, uh, it tickles my fancy, this little kiss on the cheek of it. Uh, yeah. But I'm wondering, okay, figure. do they just, like... So, like, he was sent in, like, what's the car crash plan? It's like, okay, I'm going to chop off their heads and then we're going to have a car crash accident. Or, or is it, like... Okay, we took care of the body. Here's the crash act. Like, and then it's like, okay, so we had the equivalent to you know have them in a car crash because they had their heads chopped off. Mm-hmm. I think it was that way. I think they like they uh, topped their dome off and then they put the, they simulated the car crash. Because mm-hmm. in the end, there like um, when Yark dude, <laughs> as we're gonna call him, the trolley boy, yeah, uh, sent to kill uh, Nicholas, he's all like beaten up and bruised, and then it and then. Uh, as we find out, I forget his name. Danny? Uh, person Snoop? I, uh, person from Stupid Story. Store? Uh, B.F. Skinner? Uh, yeah, Simon Skinner. Mm. Uh, he tells him, like, oh, yes, he, you know, the hotel owner will find them on his bathroom floor having slipped. I feel like, you know, he's, like, cut in places. He got bruises. Like, yeah. I'm pretty sure that people, like, I mean, they're just kind of playing into it. If they did find him there, if you're trolley boy... Actually, finished them off. I wonder if they would actually believe him and be like, "Okay, this dude's slipped and he's covered in bruises and cuts." Yeah, <laughs> oh for sure. Well, they won't suspect and anything. Further to been suspecting anything the whole movie. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess kind of like the, into. the whole town's kind of in on it to some extent. Yeah, and further to Skinner, it was kind of they set him up kind of as the main dude, like the the, the dude you suspect the most, right? Yeah, it's a nice red herring. In a sense, because it's true. It, it basically everyone. Yeah, but like it, it does. Yeah. Because it's everyone, which is kind of cool, even like the police chief and all of that, right? So that that kind of does add some intrigue to it, which was uh, pretty interesting. Like more than one person were, were, was the hooded figure, which was yeah. kind of a cool reveal. Once it got to that point, and they mentioned like that the old inspector like had issues or something, and then he like left. I'm like, oh yeah, they definitely like bopped off the inspector. Yeah. <laughs> the old inspector before Nicolas Cage came. Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. So why don't we talk about Sorry. the ending of the movie now? I don't know. Yeah. Something like that. I don't know. yeah. yeah. We don't understand the British 
flea system title. <laughs> I guess not. Because they got inspector, they got chief inspector, they got. Like, I just know that they are the police beginning. officer. Officers, not men. Not police. men, not police women, police officer. And it's not a police force, it's a police service, question mark? Yeah. Yeah, the service. Yes, let's go. <laughs> See, I watched the movie. Yeah. No, we got all these guidelines stuff, and I feel like that goes really well into our next kind of little thing. Is the like kind of like I, the relationship between Danny and mm. Nicholas. Actually, it's a good I feel segment. like this is a very strong like. Like, I feel like even like more than the previous movie, Shaun of the Dead. Like, I really feel like these two grow together, and I know it's a different type of relationship, but I can see that like Nicholas actually really warmed up to his friendship, and I really love how they play on like the trope of. Like the dramatic cop, like uh. so, like like they go to like they finish after a night of drinking, they drop the dude out of his home, <laughs> ready to be blown up in the morning. Yeah, and you know they go back to uh, Danny's house for a beer, and then you know, they watch action movies, and I feel like this is like just preparing us for like to see all these com- callbacks to the end. Yeah. And, you know, Danny does the point break thing. Yeah. We'll get to that, but I love the I love it when like they kind of basically do some straightforward character development. <laughs> yeah. My favorite um Nicolas Cage and Danny scene was when they're walking through the streets and he's kind of asking him basically about like all the people in the village and he like tells them yeah. what to do, like their little quirks and stuff. And I think it's kinda of cool to see their different quote unquote styles or their different strengths as police officers kind of melt together and how they're able to work together and mm-hmm. kind of uh, be successful together, I guess, at the yeah. end of the day, right? The perfect partnership. Yeah, they become friends. It's cool. It's cool! That's what I tell them, no rules. Breakable heaven, but ooh, whoa, whoa. It's a cruel summer with you. And time? Okay, so now I know where to edit. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely not... That, that, that's you better be, keep that in. That's, that'll be on the YouTube that I'll bet you sell. That'll be the yeah. next segment. Just Josh was saying, cool segment. <laughs> it's a preview for our Miss Americana episode. You're After good. the Cornetto trilogy, we're going to do that. Well, I think we're just going to never get to it, and then Josh is going to make the podcast. <laughs> and just start my own Taylor Swift podcast. I will be the producer. Yes, Jackie, you're my producer. Congratulations for uh, the job. Yeah, it'll be like when Chang wow. becomes the dean of the community. <laughs> what, head security guard? Perversion, perverted and wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway. I feel like their relationship is really good throughout the movie and kind of, you know, through, you know, it's beneficial to both of them. Mm-hmm. Ed realizes that the job isn't all about, you know, kind of shooting. I mean, not Ed. <laughs> Sean the dead. Danny figures out that this job. <laughs> Doug's like, Robert got something wrong. <laughs> no. <laughs> he sucks. No. This is but a jack Danny, cast. But Danny finally figures out that the job isn't, you know, what movies and stuff has been telling him because he's like us. He's like kind of the pop culture nerd who is constantly watching movies and expects cops to be yeah. like this. It's but, kind of a trope in a sense, right? Yeah. Like the, the straight lace person and the like pop culture funny the dude. Odd, then. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> this is a community podcast. Yeah, watch community on Netflix. Mm. Streaming. Go to at Robcast Podcast one on Twitter. Oh you know at Robcast Podcast on Twitter and then type in into tweet netflix.com at robcast podcast and then we'll tweet you the link back to netflix slash community give you our netflix password yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah you if you tweet at us we will give you our netflix password and mention you in the podcast yes yeah. and come to your house yes and, and give you money and, 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 and kisses yes. yeah okay give you a car this is a stalker podcast <laughs> well i feel i feel like you know danny gets to learn that the job isn't really all about this and that it's about helping people even though in the end, the job pretty much is all about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, uh, Nicolas Cage learns to lay off a bit, you know, as he says, you know, he doesn't know how to, you know, turn it off. You know? Right. It's just always work, work, work. It's a good work-life balance by the end of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm sure, I wonder how you react from working from home with the corona. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure cops are essential <laughs> workers. I guess. Fine, don't be technical. <laughs> Could have done a nice bit there. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It's very good. Uh, you want to take a quick break and then we'll be right back. Sounds good to me. Uh, so let's go on to the other two murders really quickly. Uh, first, we got Tim Messenger. The who, newspaper person? Yes, the newspaper person <laughs> who, you know, coined the phrase Sergeant An- Angel. Ang- oh, I can't speak again. Angle. Yes. Um, got his dome popped off by a uh, falling church spire. 
Yeah, I, I, I feel like it's pretty obviously murder. <laughs> <laughs> Who's to say? Like It's an old church. It's an old church. But Windy is, day. Okay, no, but think, just physics-wise, like, is it wind or something that just bl- randomly blows off a, like, a ton, like, a, a metric ton of stone off a roof? And right Who's where to say? <laughs> oh, you know, there's lots of accidents in this town. Yeah. Well, it just shows the absurdity of the premise, right? No, but if he was stand two feet to the left, he would be alive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh my god, this thing fell right beside me. legit. Oh, really lucky. And then someone comes up and just shoots him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second murder is the flower shop girl. Yes. Or lady. Who basically just gives him all the exposition. <laughs> Yeah. It's well, like, just like, oh, yes, this is the recent story. He's like, what? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, he's like buying his things and he's like slowly like, wait a second, keep talking, keep talking, keep talking. <laughs> and me. they still try to pass it off as an accident, even though he saw somebody stab her with scissors. And then he chased someone from the scene. Yeah. It was cool later on how we see like how the person, they kept hiding and then a new one would take the place. Mm. Very cool. Well, thank you. It's like a ton of old people, you know? Yeah, that too, right? It's just a lack of geezer. Yeah. I, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, this is an ageist podcast. Yeah. Well, speaking of ages, like how do how does this town sustain each other? Because you know, you know, Nick Cage he go he goes to the churchyard in the end, and he finds out that it's the neighborhood wash that's secretly undermining and manipulating the entire town to you know get the best village award. Mm-hmm. So my question is that he go he goes through the graveyard church or whatever it's a church old church right yeah and he falls down with his random rv i i'm, I'm kind of confused to what that is maybe like some like sewer drain system but it's full of bodies yeah of all the people who have been arrested so you got the person that was oh yeah that was pretty store, freaky i like that all the kids uh it was actually uh the old as we said the his like the like the guy who he replaced yeah like there's a skeleton and we hear the auto clip that's of the Lieutenant, Sergeant, whatever. <laughs> His boss said earlier is like the big bushy beer. Like we hear that. So it, can, it tells us that it's him. Which is, well, I guess if they just killed him, yeah, fine. Yeah. They yeah. still have the beer. I'm like thinking, hmm, what does skeleton still have a beer? But yeah, yeah, continue. Hair deteriorates. Dust and scar. I don't know. That. It's on the skin. I, like fall I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Um, so like, how does this count sustain each other? Because it got like, because it seems like a lot of the kids were in that bar. They all got arrested. They were all killed. What, what I'm guessing here is that it seems like this town's like mostly old people. If if Nicholas if Nicholas just left it alone, eventually would the town just all die off because no one was like having enough children to sustain the population. Because they're all old. They're killing all the youngsters. <laughs> I guess. It's like a small, like, old, idyllic British town, right? Mm. So, I mean, and maybe they are eventually, maybe they will eventually die off. <laughs> but they would die off of the best village. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but I, I feel like kind of the motivation behind this is really uh, nice because we learned earlier that uh, Danny's mom passed away from a uh, car collision or whatever they refer to it as. Right. And, and the, that drew his dad crazy because, like, mm-hmm. dad, because... He was really, because her mom was really obsessed and really enthusiastic to get the Best Village Award. And the night before, uh, she was, you know, gone to a car accident by a ton of, like, hoodlums or, you know, like, teens that were, like, driving to town. Mm. And then the town started to get filled with, like, jugglers and the Golden Man statue guy. Yeah. <laughs> and of all these people. So he, you know, got the neighborhood watch together and he brought the hammer down the town or village to kind of, you know, put it in order to mm-hmm. then, purge them of yeah, these so they people. Yeah, to kind of carry out her legacy through them. Right. Yeah. The way that they dealt with backstory in this, like uh, both in terms of that one of the uh, inspector and as well as uh, even Nicholas Cage's backstory, like it was very quick, succinct, but you got the gist of it and how it like brought the characters to where they are today. I think that mm-hmm. that was effective for the uh, tone and purposes of this movie. Yeah. 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 It was a pretty satisfying finish too. Like it, it ramped up, it escalated. He like almost he almost gets killed by them. Uh, drives away. Danny saves him. Um, and yeah, it was cool to see. Obviously, they played a lot of those tropes of the action movies, the cop movies, where he comes back. He like empties the weapons locker where they had all those, those like massive like guns and stuff from before. I feel like this is the movie really takes a turn to like parody. Like this is yeah. where we get all like the one liners and 
Yeah. He guns us up like he's at a community store. He looks at the movie and he's like, and it just like switches something on. He grabs, yeah. like, some sunglasses, rides in, like, with a horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, screw it. You know what? If I can't do it my way, I'm doing yeah. it, like, this, this way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, yeah. but the, this is insane. Like, it's, like, you really don't expect it, but it's such a welcome and, like, crazy surprise. Because mm-hmm. before this, this movie has been more of a like, kind of detective story rather than a cop story. Right. Because there hasn't really been that much action besides, like, the chase scene and, like, a bit of, like, clips of his past and stuff. But this is where, like, you really get that action. Exactly. In, like, these that, cop movies. Yeah, like. that cop, quote-unquote, cop movie. Mm-hmm. So, as you said before, he empties out, completely empties out the locker. Which Evidence is, locker, yeah. Yeah. Leaving only the, uh, what is it, water mine? Yeah. <laughs> And, it, and he just goes ham on the whole town. And I found it so funny because literally every single person in the town who was just walking around their day to day has like concealed guns. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was awesome. Like the uh, the guy who was talking to with Danny earlier, it's like, oh, why is he wearing that big coat? Maybe he's hiding something. He just like rips out a shot. Yeah. I was like, oh, maybe he's just going to town with all his guns because he knows that they won't risk it with the Village of the Year board. It'd be like a nice like covert quiet finish where they try to like take him out without arousing suspicions. Then, like, 15 people just whip out these guns. I'm like, oh, okay. Like the, girl, the girl's on a bike. She opens the basket. And she's like, just... Yeah. <laughs> and they have, like, a specialized, like, foam placement thing. It's like a suitcase. So, like, are they just always, like, loading, like, with weapons? I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty probably crazy. prepared, like, knowing that he would probably come. No, nah, they thought he was dead. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, because they thought Danny killed him and then took care of the body. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he teams up with Danny, and they got... Like, this is where, like, all the kind of the callbacks from earlier. Like, one of my favorite one is when they were at, like, the fair earlier. Uh, Danny got Nicholas to play the, like, the, like, the air rifle game. And Danny accidentally shoots the doctor. <laughs> and First he's like, oh, you're yeah. a doctor, deal with it. And then, like, later on, where he gets shot later again, he says the exact same line. But, like, it's, in, it's a different context this time. I feel like yeah. that's kind of a, con- like, that's kind of a continuous stream between these movies as we talk about with Shaun the Dead uh, first time is in the kind of like a really non comedic way but then you can use it again and it's like an, oh snap they said it before and it's like it's all connects and it's very satisfying to listen to mm-hmm. agreed but uh, yeah we move through and then they eventually reunite with the uh, the gang you know the, the police officer yes. Uh, contingent the uh, police force no not uh, wrong oh no <laughs> the police service Seriously, the force is too aggressive yeah right? <laughs> at this point they have to be kind of aggressive though right uh, I suppose yeah yeah so then they take all the bad guys everyone all Protect the bad guys the pretty much room. get taken out the mine explodes at the end some dude falls on it and the police station blows up right yeah. pretty much how it is yeah, you're moving ever after Spoilers? Yes. Oh, yeah. Let's enter our spoiler section. <laughs> now, this is the spoiler section. Simon Pegg actually has a mole on his lip. It actually is Nicolas Cage wearing a yeah. mask. <laughs> yeah, no. Good movie. We all enjoyed it. Yeah. 100%. Very so, excited for next week's The World's End. Yeah. I'm excited for that, too. It looks really good. I mean, it's bad, and you guys will definitely hate it. <laughs> it's okay. You, oh, man. You did this with Hot Fuzz, like this sarcastic thing, and it, it was fine. I, as long as I don't know anything about it. I remember watching the trailer and being like, oh, that's kind of cool. Okay. I just won't watch the trailer again, and I'll be fine. Yes. Yeah. Pro- probably, you probably forgot everything I already told you about this movie, though. So. Which one? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you have a little bit about yeah. Robert Pattinson. Okay, so we did an interview with GQ like a little bit ago about like the teen and like what he's doing and Tenet and Batman and everything. And this guy is like a stark raving lunatic. He's like, yeah. he's an absolute maniac. So when do you qualify to live in this town? So... Or village. You know, this dude, Patterson says, Yesterday I was just Googling. I was going on YouTube to see how to microwave pasta. Laughs. GQ. That's not a thing. Patterson. Put it in a bowl and microwave it. That is, that is how to microwave pasta. And also, it really, really isn't a thing. It really actually, it's really actually quite revolting. But I mean, who would have thought that it actually makes it taste disgusting? Yeah, maybe you should be microwaving pasta. Yeah. Mean, yeah? From what I gather, he's putting like warm water and like hard pasta in a bowl and trying to microwave it to cook it. This guy's a you maniac. Get, you get instant noodles if you want to, if you want to microwave pasta. Yeah, it's not even it yet. I'm essentially on a meal plan for Batman. Thank God. I don't know what I'd be doing other than that. 
but I'm, uh, I'll have oatmeal with like vanilla protein powder on it. I will barely even mix it up. It's extraordinarily easy. I eat out of cans and stuff. I'll literally put Tabasco inside a tuna can and just eat it out of the can. My preferences are just sort of eat like a wild animal. Laughs like out of a trash can. Yo, this guy's absolutely <laughs> insane. I thought Ron Patsy was a cool dude, but yeah, I thought he was like Billy Zang, but I guess he's not. Like he's a maniac. He during the interview he's alternating alternating sips of Coca Cola with pieces of Nicorette gum. <laughs> and if you read the whole article too, it's like a on GQ. Like mm-hmm. he's like a maniac. He, we, yeah, we, we he's pretty much Batman. He is Batman. Like <laughs> just uh, a lone, like a lonely brewer. Yeah, like <laughs> my creepy pasta. It, Batman, like it, play, Bruce Wayne, Batman is kind of he plays the edge between like rich playboy and also like person who's also kind of a, like it's mentally a, unstable. Yeah, le- legit. Like, remember uh, this is like fully from like Instagram and like a uh, I believe it's a Tumblr Tumblr post posted on Instagram mm-hmm. where like they show the scene from Batman 1989 where uh, Vicky Vale asks uh, Michael Keaton Batman like Do you normally eat in this room when they're eating like in the dining room with a super long table? Oh, yeah. End and he's that. like, I've never been in this in this like room before ever. And like they were like, <laughs> literally, you don't know whether he's actually never been in this room before or he's just saying that to be funny. Yeah. <laughs> like it's perfectly conceivable that he like has never been in the room before. So like I think the little kooky, weird, mentally unstable, you don't know what the hell's going on, Bruce Wayne, Batman dynamic. I think it's good. I'm excited for him as Batman. If he just like if he just goes to set and be like, "Where's the microwave old pasta?" Uh, <laughs> and then he gets into the movie, we'll be very satisfied with our Batman. Yeah, you need to like look at the article though, because he takes like pictures too for GQ, and like he also looks like a raving lunatic. Uh, I'm looking at them, and it's just like him with like a blanket tied around his head. <laughs> yeah, legit. <laughs> I'm going mentally insane. <laughs> Absolutely, yes, in two days. All but yeah, time. he talks about uh, Batman and Tenet, and it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, that's a Robert Pattinson segment. Yes. <laughs> Team Edward, Robert Pattinson on the Robcast podcast. Yeah, mm-hmm. actually, isn't uh, our uncle Robert Pattinson? Oh yeah, sorry, great uncle. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's yes. pretty cool. Uh, anyway, do you want to get to what we're into this week? What we're reading? Listening to too many questions. Oh, I finished Riverdale. Finished Riverdale last, <laughs> it was uh, so funny. The season finale is the best. <laughs> the best part was um, they're so they're they're talking about like their principal who they don't like, okay. and they're like, oh, oh principal sucks. He's not letting oh, school figures. Yeah, he's not letting Archie walk with us at graduation. Like, what are we gonna do about this? And Betty's just like, well, we could kill him oh my god no. and there's like a five second silence dramatic music and they're like yeah probably not but yeah. like so, like legit that he's dead serious you know it's so funny uh yeah no it's a great show uh i think there's another funny thing but i forget yeah it's an awful show but it's fantastic same i finished it up uh it was actually cut short because of corona like they how it works the tv shows like they film the first three four episodes they roughly they're in the process of filming then they air and then, so they're always, like, two or three episodes filmed in advance. Yeah, so, like, a few, like, they gauge the process. Right. So they're, like, still in the process of filming when Corona hit. So uh, it ended at 19 episodes instead of, like, the 21, 22 that it's supposed to. But so, was it cut? Like, like was, like, is the season done? Yeah. Okay. They said it was the season finale. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it kind of, it does, like, so they the main... a few middle episodes, then? No, they didn't cut anything. Like, they cut the last three. So, like, the main plot point... Or... <laughs> well, it's hard to say main plot point of Riverdale, because there's... To be honest, Riverdale is a perfect show to like end during Corona because there's literally, literally 25 different plot points happening at one point in time. So you can just finish up like whichever ones you want pretty easily and still <laughs> like without it seeming, seeming like disjointed. No, like because they have 7 million different plot points. So you can you have like a sense of finality. You can finish up a plot point like even if you have like three others that aren't resolved. Mm-hmm. I would say that the main quote unquote main or like the end game plot point of the season wasn't resolved um unfortunately um well i don't i don't care i watch it because it's hilarious but the, uh, but yeah says once corona is over no on a little, no uh, the, you're on a little bit that long there i love what do you mean? We're just discussing, discussing riverdale this is our riverdale <laughs> this is podcast. a riverdale podcast. Riverdale podcast but they'll probably i think extend that plot point next season then yeah wait no or yeah i so guess it doesn't five the, yeah it was renewed but the thing is I don't know how that'll work because they, they speculated that there'll be a significant time jump in between seasons. Like the next season might be after they graduate from high school and like university. It's college. 
No, no, I bet it, uh, it might be like after that too. Like they're young adults in the workforce, it's which would be a cool dynamic. Wait a minute, maybe maybe Hot Fuzz is a sequel to Riverdale. They're just old adults ad- <laughs> living in a village in London where accidents happen. Yes, <laughs> where accidents happen. They it's do like, have a lot of experience dealing with dead bodies. It's like, hey, these guys really suck at a play, and this one girl is bad at laughing. Should we kill them? Yeah, the- five <laughs> seconds. Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> yeah, basically the whole episode is Jughead writing a book about how to kill the principal anyway, so it's, it's all good. <laughs> um, what was I about to say? Chicken soup for the soul, how to kill your principal. Yeah. Um, but, to be honest, I think they should have done that with Riverdale a long time ago. Kill the At- principal? <laughs> no. After, like, season two, they outgrew high school. In season two, they outgrew, like, the high school thing. I think, again, it's hard. There's a lot of criticism, criticisms of Riverdale because after season one, the writing is absolute garbage. Well, the writing is good, but they just don't know how to condense their plot points. They have too many things going on at once okay. and they don't go in depth into what they should. But they in season two, especially seasons three and four, they go away from that high school dynamic, uh, which I really think is a disservice. They go, they get too much into that like adult, like not adult, but they get too much over their heads. Like these, these aren't, they don't focus enough on the high school dynamic, which makes Riverdale so relatable and so like good mm-hmm. in a sense. I talked, I talked for a while, okay, but so, so is a, <laughs> a podcast now. We can just take this excerpt and then just like release it as its own podcast. And another thing, why would you reintroduce Barchi? No, I actually don't mind. Barchi, Barchi, anyway, Betty and Archie. Uh, what have you been? Uh, what have you been reading, listening to? I've watching? been reading the Shrub Spy Books random Cherub. series. Cherub, 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 Cherub. Cherub. Shrubs Cherub. Shrub. No, C is Chub, man. He's been reading Chubs. <laughs> Cherub. Yeah. Cherub, uh, Cherub, spy books. They're like uh, teenage uh, or young adult, or not even young adult, but like young spies, basically, uh, by Robert Muchamore. Very good series. British. British. What's it, British? This is a British podcast. Anyway. Officer. Uh, yes. So, I'm, Rob. <laughs> I've actually been knocking a few things off my list for this week. Uh, today I finally watched Harley Quinn and the Emancipate One. Oh, did you? Birds of Prey. Without me? And yeah. <laughs> That's fair. I never get around to watching things. <laughs> Watch Shazam and Wonder Woman and all those. <laughs> yeah, thirty. I have a list, and it's like fifty things yeah. that Joshua said he would watch on the podcast, which he is yet to watch. You know what I really want to watch at some point? Um. Oh shoot, the movie Tom Cruise and the Naked or and the uh, pilot pilots. Um. Not, not runway. Um, I know a tra- Top Gun. Top Gun. Wait, Tom. Oh, it's Tom. I think about Tom Hanks. My bad. Yeah. No. Tom, yeah, Tom. Top Gun's good. Top Gun's. Good. Yeah, I don't watch I that. To, I have to watch that with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Take my breath away. Didn't watch that also really good movie. The well, the train movie with Tom Cruise. Remember when we watched that? The train movie. Well, yeah, he had, he, he kept the movie. He kept going back in time, and he had to. Oh, the like, train. Oh, that wasn't that the Jake Gyllenhaal. I keep thinking Tom Hanks. Or, oh, that's a Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. No, no. Wait, were you thinking of Edge? Is Edge no, more? No, no, no. Jake I was thinking of the Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. Oh, okay. I forget what it's called. That one's so uh, good. That's source code. Yeah, source code. That's there you definitely. Go. That, I watched like it. half an hour of it while you were watching. Oh yeah, I remember that. I popped it. It was. Good. That was such a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's on Amazon Prime. You I think you rewatched it recently, didn't you? Well, anyway, I've been watching. I'm sorry. Uh, this week I watched Devil Wears Prada for mm. the very first time. I actually really enjoyed it. The writing is it's really good. It's the beginning is like, like a very like solid beginning, and like it's very I don't know it maybe reminisce to when I watched Whiplash because mm-hmm. the character, like, um, like the like this like I forget their names, but of course I remember them before. Podcast, Miles Teller and J.K. Simmons. Yes. Oh, that dynamic you're saying is, is comparable. Like J.K. Simmons and Meryl Streep, like their characters. Yeah, comparable to the dynamic between Meryl Streep and Anne Hathaway. Yeah, like it, it's like it's different context, of course, but like it's like this power figure who like can bring you places and has all this power and control, but they're so awful to people. And right. That's just their way of doing things because it get it really gets results, and mm-hmm. that's just how it is in this industry. Mm-hmm. Like I really enjoyed that movie. I just remember that when I was young, it used to always be like on CBC, like on Sunday afternoons. <laughs> and you're like, what's this? And I'm like, oh, Gosh. it's that movie on CBC on Sunday afternoons. Mm-hmm. Anyways, yeah. What else? Uh, were you, is there another point? Uh, yeah. Um, also, Space Force is coming out, I believe, tonight as of recording this Oh, podcast. are you serious? It comes out uh, Yeah, it comes out on Friday the 29th. So damn. I, so I w- shall How? be on Netflix. Like, are they recording it all? Is it a movie or t- it's a TV show? Yeah, it's a TV show starring Steve. But they recorded it all already. They filmed it all. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's all ready to be released. Oh, cool. 
This was like really uh, BC before Corona. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so I shall be binge watching that this weekend. Interesting. And you know, ready to. Yeah, bro. We should do a space force if, episode. If it's good, we shall. We're gonna. We might dabble a little bit. Of space yeah, force. dabble in dark arts, space force. I might force you guys to watch the pilot at least. Force us to watch Space Wars? Yes, I'm gonna. Don't you mean Space, space Service? Force yeah, the, yes, Force is a bit aggressive. Space yeah. Service, it's the Space <laughs> Service. Uh, okay, yeah, so well, I guess that's this week's episode. It's been a little fun episode. This, yeah, this, this episode is definitely very chaotic. Yeah. It has, it's not even chaotic, it's very up and down, I think. Yeah. Lots of ebbs and flows. Josh, yeah. our podcasts are always up. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> uh, yeah, so come back hopefully next week if we can get it out for the world's end. And yep. we should wrap up our. Little Cornetto trilogy. Mm-hmm. At Robcast Podcast on Twitter, mm-hmm. Robcast Podcast One at gmail.com. Send us audio messages and anchors. Send us money on anchors. Send us pieces of your cake. fan mail. Cake. 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 We'll go with cake. cake. Okay. I was, yeah. Send us fan mail. I need fan drawings. Send us fan emails. mail to our address, which you don't have. Yes. It is uh, 20, 21 Sunnybrook Lane of Sherlock Avenue. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's our address. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you for listening and have a good one, guys.